So this is part four of the Raspberry Pi Kubernetes Home Lab, where we're deploying an Nginx load balancer, and we're gonna do that using Ansible. And this is for use with our Kubernetes uh, cluster on the Raspberry Pis. So we're gonna be load balancing traffic uh, between our two master servers, our APIs, our master APIs on our control nodes. So when traffic comes in uh, from a client, it'll hit the load balancer and depending on how you have it set up uh, maybe you're doing weighted load balancing round robin there's different ways to load balance but client one will go to one server client two will go to the next server client three will go to the next server and just assuming maybe you're doing a simple round robin client four would then go back around to the first server and especially in my home lab here uh, i've got i've taken this from the diagram from part one but I don't have the second master yet, the second control node, I only have one. But when I do add the second one, and in clusters with more than one node, right, assuming we're doing round robin, uh, client two, the, the red, or client one, the red one, would hit the load balancer when it attempts to reach one of these two servers, and it would be directed here to master one. The second client with that maybe the blue one would hit the load balancer and then it would be directed to number two and the third client green would hit the load balancer and then be directed back to one so it would four would go here five would go, and it would go back and forth to load balance that traffic and in this role we're going to be installing starting and enabling nginx we enable it so it starts persistently in our reboots create a config.d directory to store extra configurations for nginx Add that extra config directory to the main config so when Nginx starts, it knows to include that new directory. We create a Kate's master control host load balancer configuration, and then we have to reload Nginx for that new configuration to take effect. All this is stored in the uh, GitHub repository over here on the right. Um, all these Ansible playbooks are stored there as roles. There is a readme included in all these roles where I go through the manual commands of each one of these Ansible tasks in case you don't want to use Ansible uh, or you just can't use Ansible. And real quick, all this, everything that we're doing is documented at docs.nginx.com. They have a section for TCP UDP load balancing. I'll be putting that in the description below. Uh, but we're basically, we're configuring a reverse proxy. We're setting up a stream and a server group, and we're telling that's uh, Nginx to listen for these servers in the server group with these IPs or host names listening on these ports. So here I am on the VM. I'm using to, again, manage my entire Raspberry Pi cluster from this Ubuntu VM. Um, I've got an Nginx load balancer role here that I've created. And in my tasks, right, um, it says recommended if you have plans to upgrade this single control Kube ADM cluster to high availability, you should specify the dash dash control dash plane dash endpoint to set the shared endpoint for all control plane nodes. Such an endpoint can be either a DNS name or an IP address of a load balancer. So what this means is when we actually bootstrap and deploy our master server, master zero one in my case, I don't have a master two yet, but I do plan on implementing master zero two. So I would want to specify this using the IP address of the load balancer that I'm about to configure. So going over this playbook, we have install nginx, right? So we're using the apt get install command from the apt module in Ansible to get the nginx software downloaded onto this one host. And actually, here's the main playbook I'm using, right? So if I actually uncomment that out, um, nginx load balancer, but I can define that I only want to run this one role on this one host but coming back and coming back to the main task.yaml here uh, we're then going to use the service module in Ansible to start and enable nginx so the name of the service the state we want it started and we want to enable it and I've also got tags here for nginx uh, in case you only want to run some nginx install tasks we create an Etsy nginx tp, tcp conf.d directory. So this is the directory where our extra nginx configured configurations will be installed for TCP load balancing. Um, and then we use the file module for this. We specify a path to the file. 
uh, and in this case it's actually a directory so we need a state of directory we then add the include statement into the etc nginx.conf which is etc include etc nginx tcp.conf.d asterisk and what this is saying is when nginx boots up it's going to look at its configuration nginx.conf and it's going to see this line and it's going to go ahead and include this directory and anything in it any configurations it can find in its uh, configuration on start and we're using the line and file module we specify a path to the file we want to add a line to um, i'm keeping it pretty simple here i'm just adding a line this is going to add the line to the end of that file and i want that line to be present then we create an etsy nginx tcp conf .d Kubernetes .conf using the template module. And then we place that in the tcp conf .d directory that we created earlier up here. And the Kubernetes .conf configuration looks like this. So this is the meat and potatoes of how we're setting up TCP load balancing for our masters, right? So we define an upstream using the master nodes as the upstream nodes. So we, if we type stream, we're defining uh, what are our upstream nodes that we want to load balance between. Stream defines the top level stream block. Define each server and the port that the server listens on for traffic. So in our case, I've only got one master right now. I'm going to be added in a second in the future. But right now I only have one. So I would put the server name or the IP address. And since I have static IP addresses, I'm putting an IP address and the port that that host is going to listen on for the traffic coming from this load balancer and that port is going to be 6443 we do upstream kubernetes to define a server group so this is our server group our upstream group is kubernetes servers and the proxy path here is going to refer to that upstream group so whatever uh, you make the proxy paths you if whatever you have a group here for you make the proxy pass that I, and again, I've commented out master two because I don't have a master two yet, but it will in the future. So I'm just accounting for that. All right, and just to prove, go ahead and prove to you that this works, I'm gonna go ahead and run this playbook real quick. So I'm gonna enter my SSH password, my become password, and we're gonna roll through this. So it's gonna skip these roles because I've had them commented out. It's only gonna hit this one host for installing the Nginx load balancer, which is in my host file. And then we're going to run through these tasks here. So we're installing Nginx. And I've already run this through, but I'm just running it to show you that it works. And because Ansible is item potent, it knows these tasks have already been done. So they're all going to be okay, except for certain ones. Um, so actually, I edited the Kubernetes.conf here. Um, I had these comments in here when I made the video but i had not applied them before this video so they got applied there we had a change and then of course reload nginx is always going to change because you're always uh, reloading the service every time and guys i know i said in part three that the next part was going to be actually bootstrapping the control nodes uh well when i went ahead and i was reading the documentation and they had recommended uh, to point your control node at your load balancer beforehand i decided that it would be best to do the load balancer before bootstrapping the cluster. And I also did the certificates. Uh, so you'll see the certificates roll here actually. Uh, so in part five, we're gonna go over creating the certificates using Ansible and dishing them out using Ansible. And then actually in part six, we'll go ahead and we'll bootstrap the control nodes.